Hi, my APA friends. It's Friday afternoon. I've just survived the first massive week of school holidays. And what else can I think to do with my time except talk about my APR? Actually, I want to talk to you about the Asian lid. Doo -doo -doo. Gasp, it's the Asian lid. The curse of ortho K fitters everywhere. The Asian eyelid is like a thick wedge of tissue. And so there's just so much power that the lid can put on the surface of the ortho K lens with blinks whereas the Caucasian eyelid is more like a thin sliver of tissue, so it just doesn't put quite as much pressure on a contact lens. These are very suspect looking images, but trust me, they are pictures of eyelids. Now here's a trickier one I've had this week, and I just really feel like we might be reaching the limit of ortho K treatment for this child, and that she might be better in soft lenses because of the power of her lids. I think it's also a little bit of a combination of perhaps a really wooden cornea that just doesn't respond. 100% to the ortho K treatment. I'll show you her maps. So she's minus 325, so we're shooting for sort of 325 to 375 of treatment. And this is a lens that we've designed. You can see there's a little bit of inferior decentration of the lens, and that's likely because of lids. Um, right at the apex, we've got only 150 of treatment though, despite being minus three, so we're just not getting good acuity out of this. So we've designed a lens to treat for a whole lot more than this and I'll show you those maps. This is the new lens and this was followed up in April and you can see that it's starting to nasally decenter on her eye. And she's got incredibly powerful lids, they're just a huge big issue. She's got quite good vision with this one because you can see we've got a good amount of treatment, we're actually hitting refractive target but it's a tiny little treatment and it's just not a nice looking lens. Once I had a look at that lens on her eye it was starting to bind. So I actually changed the lens and put some fenestrations on it and I'll show you the result. Here's the lens I saw this week and you can see that's actually looking a lot better. It's much more central. But the problem is uh, we've only got 1.87 diopters of treatment um, right on the center. Now looking at our axial power map gives you a much better judgment of the power change. Yeah, still not great, still not three diopters. And she liked that other one previously that was mashing a cornea. It wasn't causing any staining though, let me just say that. Um, but creating a lot more treatment. So this eye is responding, yeah, sort of okay, but the left eye is even worse. Here's the left eye, and it doesn't matter what we do, this lens just persists on decentering temporally and inferiorly, and this is a thing that can happen that we just can't get past the power of those lids. We've also got a minimal amount of treatment right on her apex there, only about a diopter, and if I have a look at her axial maps or refractive maps that give us more data you can see that this treatment's right off to the side but even if it's at its deepest zone we've only got two diopters some areas there where we're up to 2.3 diopters and remember she's minus three so we're just not getting close with ortho k now for this patient this is despite ordering lenses which treat for 150 200 percent of her refraction we're still not getting full treatment and the thing that concerns me is that we know from the under correction studies that if a child is six nine or less that this is something that can potentiate, can speed up the progression of their myopia. We're having one more go at it. I've told her mother and I've told her mother and the child as well that I think we might have to go to soft lenses because soft lenses are independent of wooden corneas. They're independent of eyelid forces. And for her, I just don't think that we can achieve what we need to out of ortho K, even with a steep enough cornea and even with a relatively simple refraction because of the power of her lids. Another ortho K where we've just not been able to get to where we need to because of Asian lids. Now, if you have a look at these maps firstly, these tangential plots, it looks like a central island. It looks like that we're simply not getting enough treatment in the central area of the lens. But if I change them over to an axial map, and now I'll show you a difference map, so what you can see there is that there's quite a bit of treatment. This area down here that looked like a central island actually does have a proper amount of flattening. If it was a proper central island, that would be a plus amount there. But we just can't get a full treatment because we have so much pressure. The top eyelid just shoves the top of the lens down and then it flicks up at the bottom and so we just don't get as much treatment down here. Essentially, we end up with clearance at the bottom and the lens just doesn't seal down through 360 degrees. That's a curse of an Asian lid right there. And this patient gets about 6'6 six, six minus vision. He's only about minus 2, but we just really can't get much better with his ortho K fit. No staining whatsoever, but that's the best it's going to get. And now I've changed it back to a tangential map. You can see this same thing here. So we've just got this area where there's heaps more treatment at the top because the lens is pushed down by that top lid and sticks out at the bottom, and we just don't get that full amount of treatment. Now I find it a bit hard to predict because sometimes we get a beautiful result with ortho K. Uh, this is a patient who has Asian lids as well. She sees 6.5 out of this eye, 
This is her right eye and you can see there's a bit of temporal decentration of the lens, but that's really something that ends up unavoidable when we've got a lot of more flattening on the nasal um, aspect of the cornea than what we do on the temporal aspect. You can fix this by making the treatment zone a little bit larger, increasing the optic zone diameter, but with 6 fiber acuity, it's really not an issue. This patient's about minus four, so you can see right at the apex of a cornea, we've got about 3.8 diopters of treatment, so that's quite good, but if I change over to axial power, which gives you a better idea of the actual refractive change, we can see that we've got that bit of temporal decentration, about three and a half diopters on center, but there are areas over here where we've got over four diopters. And like I said, amazing acuity, so this is working quite well. And here's another curse of the Asian lids, epiblepharon. Have a look at those lashes. This is a patient who's been wearing OrthoK for around eight years. There it is. That's the right eye. And there's that left eye again of our epiblepharon patient. That's what her eye looked like after she'd been lost to follow up for a year or so, wearing lenses that were close to six, seven years old, and that frankly terrified me that I was only getting about 619. So the lenses were cleaned with a progent, working towards replacing them. And this is what she looked like a couple days later, which is still not fantastic. All of this staining we can see down the bottom is just because of these lashes that just poke and scratch and scratch and scratch and scratch on the surface of her eye every time she looks down. But this central staining is from the lens, so we need to replace that lens. Now here's the topography of our patient who's got the nasty epiblepharon. You can see this actually looks pretty good. They're quite well-centered lenses, just those treatment zones are a bit oval, and that's likely the lid pressure. Ah, uh, yuck, look at that left eye. So this is the left eye when it's got all of that staining which I showed you in the image just before. The right eye is still treating quite well. And here's the left eye a couple days ago and the left eye after a progen clean. So you can see that it's improved significantly and you can even just see there's more regularity in the Myers compared to what it was last time. Um, I'm convincing this family that they need a new pair of ortho -OK lenses. These ones are several years old and she's done really quite well with them but this is just not good enough and these lashes are obviously an ongoing issue as well which really concerns me in terms of increasing her risk of infection. So would she be better wearing a soft lens? I wonder if she would be better wearing a soft lens because at least we'd have a bandage there during the day. We'd have something actually providing a barrier between those nasty scratching little lashes and the surface of her eye. She doesn't have any discomfort despite all of that staining and I don't trust her corneal sensitivity as I said before so she might not actually notice any problems but there's no hyperemia despite that constant irritation there. To start with I was pulling her lashes out every three months. Um, but there isn't really any particular treatment for that except time and as I told her as her eyelids get older and saggy although she's 17 so that's still a bit of a time away that these eyelashes might drop away a little bit from the surface of the eye and stop doing their nasty stuff. And now she's done pretty well but unfortunately her brother's not been so lucky. Okay so here's bro. Now this eye is actually 6'6 six, six plus and this eye is 6'6 six, six, despite pretty, uh, pretty ugly looking maps and there's absolutely no staining on his cornea, but over many years of ortho -OK wear, with pretty good acuity, we've not been able to get better fits like this just because of those super powerful eyelids. Now he's gone back to baseline recently. These are axial power maps, and you can see that we've got a decent amount of cell here. So we've got about two diopters of corneal cell on his right, and not a whole lot in his left, 1.2 diopters. So it doesn't look like it should be too hard a knife to fit. But something I do want to point out to you is how flat it is. At the apex, we've only got 42.8 and 42.8 diopters. And this is about a minus three diopter cornea. And our flat, core, flat K, you can see, is quite a bit flat. So it might be that there's a limitation to just what this cornea can achieve. But the real limitation in the past has just been those eyelids just shoving the lens every which way except where it needs to be. Okay, so he's gone out of ortho K and here's his script. Here's his right eye. Here's his left eye. So he's 17, he's still likely to progress, he's got two myopic parents, so we still want to do something for my AP control, something better than single vision distance contact lenses, but what contact lens are you going to fit? When you've got a 225 cell, we can't exactly leave it uncorrected. Leaving a child that much undercorrected is going to be something that could speed up his myopia progression. But what have we got as an option for these myopic astigmats? Obviously if ortho K works well, it's a fantastic option because we can correct decent amounts of astigmatism with ortho K, which we can't correct with our current soft lenses available for myopia control. We do have the ProClear multifocal Toric lens available. Uh, that comes out of the UK and takes a little while for the trials to arrive, but you can get distance-centered multifocals in a variety of ad powers.
If you're in the US, you could try the Visioneering Technologies Natural View Lens. This lens works a little bit like an optical pupil. It's got this huge depth of focus and it's something that may actually be able to mask astigmatism. I haven't tried it yet for my apps because it's not yet available in Australia, but I've heard about it over in the US and I think that's something that should approach our Australian shores in the near future. Something you could try in the UK would be the Mark NV lenses. So these are monthly custom-made lenses which you can get to almost any sill, any diameter, uh, 15 different ad powers. And you can custom order these lenses specifically to what you need for the patient down to one degree axes. So if I was in America, I might be trying the natural view lens, which is a daily disposable. If I was in the UK, I'll be trying the Mark NV lenses. I'm in Australia though, which means I've got some lovely weather to enjoy. It's winter outside and it's only, you know, 17, 18 degrees, but it means I don't have quite as many lens options available. So what am I gonna do for this patient? To be continued, I'll tell you soon. So what are the take home messages? There's my topographer over there in the background. Hey little guy. I think it's important to have a discussion right from the outset when looking at myopia management with contact lenses that perhaps an aging child may not be suitable for ortho K or may not achieve the result that we desire, even if the cornea looks steep enough and even if the prescription seems low enough to have success. I've got some of these patients that are just absolutely dead set on ortho K even if we're not getting good results and that's a real issue. It's a real issue if we're not getting good enough acuity but they're so absolutely consigned to ortho K that they're not willing to consider soft lenses. As we've had some recent discussions on the Myopia Profile Facebook page, soft contact lenses really are the amazing future of myopia management. And I absolutely love ortho K and I think there's always going to be a place for it. But I just wanted to share these cases with you to give you a little bit of food for thought. Feel free to comment. Uh, thank you very much for listening and beware the Asian eyelid, which I don't have. <laughs>